Welcome to Biology My Passion. I am Soumya Harikrishna. We are dealing with the chapter Organisms and Populations and uh, after learning abiotic factors and responses, today we are going to discuss adaptations in organisms. When we learned about responses, we saw some organisms uh, show physiological responses like sweating or shivering or all physiological responses whereas migration is a kind of behavioral response. So these responses are actually kind of adaptations for the organisms to live in the given environment. So what is adaptation? Adaptation is any attribute. It can be physiological, morphological or behavioral that enable the organism to survive and reproduce in a given environment. It's not only the survival of the animal is important, but ability to reproduce is also equally important to maintain the species generation after generation. So how have these adaptations come to organisms? They evolved during evolution. They acquired these adaptations to acclimatize or adjust with the environment in which they live. So now let us discuss different types of adaptations in different types of habitats. Some organisms live in dry desert conditions. You know in deserts, high temperature and water scarcity are remarkable characteristics. So, can the rats survive in deserts? They hardly drink water. Then how do they get water for their metabolic reactions? They have two adaptations. The first one is, they burn their fat. They have a lot of fat stored in their body and fat oxidation has water as a byproduct. So this water they utilize for their metabolic reactions. And the second adaptation is to excrete a concentrated form of urine so that they conserve majority of water in their body itself. Now coming to plants in the desert conditions. They are called xerophytes. So they have special xerophytic adaptations to survive. Basically all these plants have very long roots to reach the water table to acquire water. But other than that, usually these plants have sunken stomata. That means, you know, mostly stomata are on the lower surface. But here it is little deep inside so that it's not directly exposed so that uh, uh, transpiratory water loss can be avoided. That is called a sunken stomata, which are in the deep pits. And at the same time, they have thick cuticle over the epidermis to avoid transpiration. You know, the cuticle is a waxy layer. These plants have a special photosynthetic adaptation called a CAM pathway. CAM stands for Crassulacean Acid Metabolism. That is, they open the stomata during night, take in carbon dioxide, but uh, during the day they do photosynthesis with the help of light, but uh, stomata is closed during the uh, daytime to avoid transpiratory loss. When we come to cactus, which is exclusively found in the desert regions or the Opuntia, these plants have succulent photosynthetic stem. Their stem is green and flattened and it is photosynthetic. And leaves are reduced to spines to avoid water loss. Now, if you think about cold regions, what are the adaptations? So, in cold region, mainly mammals have a kind of morphological changes that is called an Allen's rule. So mammals in the colder region, so clearly uh, listen here, it's not the animals in the colder region. Mammals in the colder region have shorter limbs and ears in order to avoid heat loss from the body because they are in the cold region, they want to keep themselves warm. So you know that the last video I uh, discussed on the surface area, how it is related to heat loss, right? Limbs, ears, earlobes are all small, then what is the advantage? Heat, the exposure to the environment is less so that they can conserve more heat in their body. That is called an Allen zone. The same way seals are found in the polar regions. They have a thick layer of fat under their skin. That is called a blubber. So that is also acting as an insulator, preventing the heat loss from the body. You know, all animals living in colder regions have thick fur over their body. Thick and long fur they have. Then next, uh, another condition that we observe is the changes that we face when we go to high altitude place. High altitude place means they are above sea level. So the more and more we go, we know the temperature changes. It is becoming colder. But at the same time, what happens to the atmospheric pressure? It decreases. So since the atmospheric pressure is decreasing, the amount of oxygen available is also less. So, all of a sudden when we go from planes, that suppose we are living in planes and we just go to the high altitude place, then we feel some kind of discomfort. 
those uh, symptoms are collectively called as altitude sickness the high altitude place usually about 3500 meters we get these kind of uh, symptoms the symptoms of altitude sickness are nausea fatigue palpitations etc but if you stay in that place for two three days it will back, come back to the normal heartbeat and the pace how is it happening our body will cope up with the situation by increasing the rbc content in by increasing the uh, respiratory rate and also decreasing the binding of hemoglobin with oxygen so that more oxygen will be available to the cells now coming to certain very harsh habitats only animals having certain very special adaptations can live one example is archibacteria you know archibacteria there are thermoacidophiles halophiles and all especially the bacteria that we find at high temperatures that is called a thermoacidophiles these bacteria have certain adaptations because they live in deep thermal vents or hot springs where temperature is more than 100 degrees celsius so they should have special type of the wall to protect them and also special type of plasma membrane that lipid arrangement is slightly different from the normal ones and apart from that they have special enzymes which are thermostable means the enzymes do not get denatured at high temperature one example we learn in PCR where we use Thermus aquaticus bacteria uh, for the DNA polymerase enzyme TAC polymerase we learned okay that's the commercial exploitation of this the next is a uh, fish in antarctic waters that is uh, which are living uh, in temperature less than zero degree celsius so how do they get adapted to that particular region with the help of certain anti-freeze proteins they have evolved uh, to make some proteins which are anti-freeze in nature so from normal uh, freezing point of sea water this is even less than that so they don't get uh, solidified water in their body or crystals forming in their body and they are safe nowadays we are commercially exploiting this antifreeze proteins extracted from this fish for making ice creams uh, next is the uh, marine invertebrates and fishes what is their prob problem they are one osmoregulation and another one is the atmospheric pressure is very high when they are at a depth so these animals usually in marine animals they have air filled body cavity uh, they have swim bladder and uh, their uh, body shape will allow them to survive at different zones of the sea when the fishes are at uh, the depth of the sea that is at the bottom of the sea they have very dense bones to withstand the pressure and they do not have swim bladder uh, so that they can survive there then next uh, uh, they have special plasma membrane and also special protein to withstand this pressure Next is the behavioral response shown by desert lizards. Desert lizards, uh, they usually what happens is during a very hot summer, they come to shades where they get some comfortable uh, condition. Whereas during a uh, winter season, they go out and bask in the sun to warm themselves. So that is absolutely a behavioral response. So these are the different adaptations organisms possess to live in a particular environment if the abiotic factors are not suitable. So, with this organism level of ecology is over, hereafter we will be discussing population level of ecology. Hope you understood the concepts that we discussed today. So, if you like my videos, please like, share and subscribe to my channel, Biology My Passion.